Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 82 where you send me your email questions to msargent23 at comcast.net That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. So let's get right to it. This first one's called Admiral Bird Reading Recommendations. Hi Mark, I just discovered your Flat Earth Clues videos because of another Rob Skiba video. Very thought-provoking. Do you have any reading recommendations on Admiral Byrd? That's from Chris Green. Uh, no. No, no, I don't. Uh, it's probably the first question I've gotten regarding reading recommendations. For There's probably a ton of stuff out there on him. I mean, he was probably America's greatest explorer of all time. So just go, go to Amazon, check out what's there, and by all means, if you haven't already watched it, go and look up on YouTube the full Long Jeans Chronoscope uh, Admiral Byrd interview from uh, the CBS affiliate. That's what I would recommend. This one's called Shirt. Mark, have you seen this? And it is a black shirt that says, Wisdom is Tolerance of Cognitive Dissonance. Yeah. Good. No, I have not seen it. That's awesome. Thank you very much. That is from Rick. Thank you, Rick. This one's called Ball Earth Model. Mark, this is what I'm using to show ball earthers just how ridiculous it is to think we live on a spinning ball. And the YouTube video, and this is from Clinton, Saskatoon, Canada, and the video is called Ball Earth Model. So look it up if you get a chance. Pretty good video. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one's called Indisputable Proof of Flat Ball Earth One Way or the Other. Dear Mark, we haven't communicated before and you don't know me. My latest dinner party topic is the world is flat, which immediately puts paid, paid to all the ant anecdotes about holidays last year and speculation about our future as whites here in democratic South Africa. Oh, okay. It is greeted with incredulity. As you will well know, but after a few proofs, it invariably results in lots of lively debate. It has often occurred to me that irrefutable proof would be to measure the distance along the appropriate lines of latitude. From Cape Town to Tierra del Fuego, from there to Melbourne, and from there back to Cape Town. First on a globe, and then on Gleason's new standard map of the world, and then compare the results to the empirically accepted distances. I have often wondered why the above exercise, to my knowledge, has not been done before. Uh, it, it can't have been done because if it had, there would be no debate any longer. I look forward to hearing from you. Kind regards, A. Yates. And, I, and he's got an actual signature there, but I can't, I think it starts with a C, but I, I don't, cannot read it. So, yeah, thank you for that. And, uh, f you know, even if we did that test, there would be a lot of people disputing it because we don't have any real agreement on the actual shape of the map. I mean, uh, yeah, I start out people with the AE map, but if you've been in Flat Earth longer than six months, you start immediately uh, going into other directions. I shouldn't say immediately. You start drifting off into other directions when it comes to maps. So, it's, but I like, I like what you're thinking. And thank you for writing from South Africa. This one's called, could you please answer some of my questions? Hello, Mark. I'd just like to start off by saying that I believe more in oblate spheroid Earth, and this mail is in no way to attack you or any flat earthers. Yeah, we'll see about that. Even though I have my beliefs, I'm still open and interested to new ideas. So if you could take your time to answer some questions, not for a video or an article, just for personal interest, that would be great. I uh, see so he's got a bunch of questions here, and I don't know if I'm going to answer them uh, at any length. Uh, so if the Earth is flat, are the other planets in our system flat too, or do they not exist? They don't exist. Does global warming exist? Uh, makes more sense in an enclosed pressurized system. If so, how does it affect our planet? Th what I just said. If the ice wall were to melt, would all continents be covered in water? No, because there's a lot, I mean, just the edge of the ice wall wouldn't do it. It would have to be a lot, a lot of extra water. Um, I've seen some people talking about that the sun and the moon only orbiting the earth, or do you believe that to be true, or how does the sun scale up compared to the moon? The sun and the moon, I think, are the same size. Do, do the sun and the moon orbit inside of the dome or outside? I prefer inside, but it could be right outside. You never know. What really is the dome? Is it something we could touch? What is it made of? I, take your pick. Uh, heavy element, heavy water, uh, high frequency, a force field, electromagnetic magnetic field. I, who knows? Don't know. 
Uh, and for my final question, as of now, there are 72 space agencies in the world. What are they gaining by withholding the truth from people? Money. <laughs> a lot, a lot of money. Again, remember, NASA makes $52 million a day. That's their budget. We pay for that. We give them $52 million a day, every day. Could you spend $52 million a day? I don't think you could. Could come up with more questions, but you probably don't want to waste your entire day answering my questions. As I said in the beginning, I'm not trying to attack you at all. I'm just really curious. P.S. Please don't make a video on me. Best regards. Okay, I won't give his last name, but his first name's Simon. And I won't write him back and tell him that I answered this on Q&A email. Uh, and, and just so you know, Simon, I get a lot of emails like this from globalists that'll, that'll ask. Again, it's in your head. And so, and considering how long ago this email was, you, you've resolved it one way or the other. Okay, this one's called ISS Moon Transit. Use camera zoom to scale image of the Earth. Mark. Uh, uh, Jared and others have been able to capture the ISS transit of the moon as it at a predicted time, you, this can be used as a scaling test and proof. If you document what zoom setting you had on your P900 camera at, at during the video, I'm reading this as is folks, uh, then we can transfer that information to a scaling test of an object of a known size on earth. Use computer software to assist with the demonstration and the scaling of the images. The ISS is supposed to be 356 feet by 240 feet or slightly larger than a football field and 250 miles up above us. So see how far away you can see a football stadium from at the same zoom setting on the camera here on Earth, then scale it to the ISS, the camera's field of view from the moon transit. For example, if you were at 70 power zoom for the ISS moon transit video, set your camera up aimed at a target on Earth with the camera again zoomed at 70 power. Now, before we even go any further, you know there's going to be a little problem there because as you're looking up, the atmosphere gets thinner really, really quickly to where you're even at four miles and the atmosphere is much, much thinner. How if you're looking on the ground, you're looking through at thickness it just just keeps getting bigger and bigger and thicker and thicker sorry uh test one try picking up an object in the distance such as a large building that appears the same size as what the iss was in the moon transit video based on the camera's field of view then figure out how far away that building is to scale you should be able to calculate how high up the supposed iss is above us in the sky a city skyline from a certain distance might be a great option as you can select from a variety of structures to select and match an apparent size to the ISS. Test two, head to a high elevation. You see, that's a little better. At least, at least you're thinking, thinking straight there. Uh, head to a high elevation where you can get a long distance video. Viewing an object 250 miles away would be difficult due to the atmosphere, but not impossible. Look up world record photography. Um, I said that, not him. But see how large a far away other mountain would look at scale at the same zoom setting as the ISS video capture. Once you find a mountain or rock formation in the distance that is clear enough capture the large formation at the same camera zoom setting, you can then scale the still images from topographic information and known distances on Earth maps. The scale from your terrestrial based photo should be able to help you determine if it would even be possible to view a football field sized ISS from a distance of 250 miles or if it would have to be such much closer. Test three, confirm our suspicions about what we figure they could be using to fake ISS flybys. Same zoom camera setting, view a terrestrial object the size of a high altitude plane from 50 to 80,000 feet away and see what it looks like. How does a large plane scale at a distance of only 10 to 15 miles away uh, at the same camera zoom setting? One of these test options, should be able to prove that either the distance above us, altitude, or the size and dimensions of the supposed ISS are incorrect due to scaling problem. Best part is, you know the zoom settings for a comparison. Other trusted independents can help you get photo data from their locations for you to use if they have the same P900. Hope somebody can run with this. Let me know your thoughts. Cheers. And that's from Mark. And yeah, yeah, it's not bad, but you, you have to take into account that the atmosphere looking horizontally is very, very different from looking vertically. Horizontally, the thickness will eventually compound and result in a big, big problem, which is why you can't see, uh, you know, super, super long distances. In long distance photography, you have to be on a mountain peak to do it. Uh, whereas looking straight up, I mean, look, even, even if you get up to 20,000 feet, 30,000 feet, which is 30, 35,000 is cruising altitude, the air is much, much thinner and, and your visibility is much, much further. This one is called, Who Are We? Why Are We Here? Hi, Truth Seekers. My name is Mark Paputi, 
73 Marbren on YouTube, and I have been a truth seeker since the 1980s. The three of us has, have found truth about where we are. This was also sent to Jesse Spots. We all agree with the truth that the Earth is a flat stationary and not a spinning globe. We have all learned the truth is very sweet in the mouth, but extremely bitter in the stomach. That's biblical, by the way. In my opinion, the flat Earth truth will not wake people up. The clear majority of people love to live the lies and will defend the lies. Uh, I disagree. What if where we are, truth pales in significance to who we are and why we are here. Please consider watching my recent discussion with Nathan on this issue. Do not trust me. All caps. Okay. But I don't know how to respond to that one. Uh, this one's called Interesting Me Thinks. Hey, Mark, big fan. Keep the thought process. Anyway, I recently received my Class A license, and I've been traveling across the U.S. I, yeah, I'm assuming it means trucker's license. I've begun to notice things for the sunrise as we run teams in 12-hour drive shifts, and I run nights. So I decided to start taking videos for evidence, and also in hopes that this could possibly help it out in the awakenings of our brethren. The material is for use as you can see fit or to share with the community by all means. I noticed the first break of morning sun in Maryland came from the north and had a small chuckle to myself at Globeheads. I call them globalists, but Globeheads is fine. But now the same thing happened in Arizona. By all means, correct me if I'm wrong, but here it is to see for yourself. Enjoy, and I look forward to some feedback. Take care out there, bud. And that's from Aaron. And the only problem with that, Aaron, was you didn't attach anything. That's a rookie mistake, and you hate to see it. Uh, we've all done it. You send the email, and you, you don't attach the, the pictures. But I will look for pictures in future emails, because hopefully he remembers. And if you're listening to this, send the pictures. This one's called Survival Guide. Hey, Mark, I've been hearing about your survival guide for some time now, and I figured I better get one. Thanks for everything that you've done so far. Keep it up, my friend. Sincerely, Chris Lee Lewis from Tornado Alley. And yeah, if anyone wants a free survival guide, it's only like two megs. It's a little PDF file called Empty Shelves. I wrote it after the Katrina debacle. I, I, it's free. Just just ask me for it. Just shoot an email and say, hey, Mark, I want your survival guide. And I will attach it to the email. Fire it off to you. Piece of cake. This one's called Flat Earth Homework, Kennedy Space Center and Room 237. Mark, it was a pleasure meeting you, Patricia, Rob, and other flat earthers at the Arcadia California meetup. I've been making it a point and would like to encourage others to do your flat earth homework. What I mean by this is to look at both sides of the debate and gather as much knowledge as possible. The morning after the Arcadia meetup, I was on a flight to Orlando, Florida. During the week I spent there, my sister and I went to Kennedy Space Center. It was a very interesting place, possibly even more so for a flat earther. Today I was YouTubing Room 237. There are a few videos, both pro and con, on the subject. One talked about the significance of the yellow VW Beetle in the opening scene. I noticed something that wasn't mentioned in the video. Werner Von Braun's initials, slightly mixed up, but present. VW Beetle, Werner Von Braun. Oh, Werner Von Braun. Oh, very clever. Oh, I like that. I hadn't caught that. And sorry it took me so long to get your email. Crazy, huh? Respectively, Steve Griffith, a.k.a. Flat Earth License Plate, Filtast, F-I-L-T-A-S-T, which, if you, as you guys know, is, um, it's flat. It's in the middle of flat. And he sent me a couple pictures from the Kennedy Space Center. One is of the space shuttle Atlantis, and the other is of a spacesuit, which can't work. Awesome. Good stuff. This one's called Flat Slacking Trademark. Winky face. Hi, Mark. I love your passion for flat earth. And I think you and that sexy potato ladies F E light trademark approach might serve a small purpose in the grand scheme of things. However, your S W show is like a fat chick with no boobs. <laughs> okay. It is basically the S S D D same old, same old every week with a couple new callers and F E happening sprinkled in sprinkled in i mean seriously if you can take such a earth-shattering topic like fe and make a boring show out of it you ain't trying soldier now drop and give me 20 new subject matter experts <laughs> oh I'm, I'm gonna continue this email i didn't know it's troll email when i first got it look i get the whole unsolicited appeal but why not reach out to some low-level people who are in the know who might not realize it maybe start calling up people who manufacture or install style install long range pipelines bridges canals or railroad tracks they obviously have to account for earth's curvature right 
There are probably thousands of everyday people like the few I mentioned who are just paid laborers with no hidden agenda or reason to lie. This might be your ticket to getting that little check mark you so desperately want by your name on YouTube. I don't desperately want it. I, I do want it, but that's just the gamer in me. I, I love those little little things. Anyway, my point is maybe a person in your position could try to do a little less flat slacking, <laughs> a little more flat smacking. Meetups and FE conferences or vacations. Oh, wow. Wow. This is awesome. Our real work is done in the field, soldier, and like it or not, you're on the front line. Fire at will. Best switches, Robert. P.S. Please send me your list of subject matter extras. What are you talking about? The list of... It's it's on... It's up in the playlist. Don't be lazy. It's literally in the playlist. In fact, if you subscribe to my channel, it's recommended. You don't even have to do anything. It literally pops up on the screen. P.P.S. Sorry if I offended you. Missourians are notorious for being brutally honest and forthcoming. It's a curse and a blessing. Uh-huh. What do you want me? What do you want me to say? I've made a ton of con. You know what? I'm not even going to defend myself to this guy. Forget it. This one's called Coast to Coast Interview. Uh, hi, Mark. Requesting the Coast to Coast Interview. Regards, Cleep Clop. I don't think that's his real name, Cleep Clop. And yes, I sent it to him. Anyone wants the Coast to Coast Interview? Because I signed a release form for them. That's a hint to other people. That most of the other uh, interviews I did not sign a release form to. They, they said you wouldn't do the interview, though, if I didn't, which means I can't reproduce it anywhere. So if anyone wants it, I've got the raw audio files on my machine, and I can just email them over to you through WeTransfer. Just ask for them. Because you cannot put it on YouTube. They will strike you. This one's called Five Scientific Questions. Hi, Mark. Please send me your five scientific questions. Thanks. That's from David Collins. Yep. Same sort of thing applies. I wrote uh, five questions. Actually, I read them out on video, but I wrote five questions to... A German television team that was working with me to try to organize a date between myself and a Georgetown physicist and whatever physicist assistance he had. And they, I was the one that started it. So I wrote these five questions and then I read them on, on the, on, on video and, and they sent them off to him because it wasn't going to be a live debate. We were going to do it in, in very compartmentalized. And that was it. They, that was, they, they weren't going to do the debate. The questions, they weren't acceptable to them, even though I thought they were very good scientific questions. They, um, uh, so if anyone wants them, I won't rattle them off here right now. Uh, just let me know and I can shoot them off to you. Same sort of thing. Just say five scientific questions, please. And I will send them off to you. This one's called survival guide. Oh, great. Uh, this, <laughs> You know, I, sh I shouldn't keep bringing it up. It becomes cyclical, doesn't it? I keep saying, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, people, if you want a survival guide and then more people. Uh, but I have to read it. So, uh, Mark, please send me your survival's guide. Thanks, John Matheson. And, yep, anyone wants that, I'll send it to him. This one's called Hi, Mark. Literally, it's what it's called. Hi, Mark. Howdy, Mark. I guess all is well. Hoping, looking forward to seeing you in Denver. I just watched a video on Gary Orson's channel where he calls you out. I do who the heck is Gary Orson? I should probably click on this. I was disgusted and I thought you may want to rebut his ignorant, brainwashed, moronic views. Sorry for the crappy writing. I'm still pissed off. Anyway, here's the link. I used to subscribe to him, but no more. Please pass this on to your viewers so everyone can show him some flat earth love. Nathan. All right, I'm going to click on the link. Just normally I don't, but I'm going to find out what it was called because I don't remember. Yeah, that's why. N n hardly. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I got actually I did get quite a few views. He's got eighty-two thousand subscribers, but I never caught it because it doesn't have flat Earth in the title. If you don't have flat Earth in the title, I am going to miss it. Just so you know, that's all I ever search for. Uh, it's called flat shaming by Gary Orsom. You can look it up, flat shaming. Uh, and I don't. If he calls me out, you know what? I'm gonna. How long is it? I don't know. I'm gonna watch this afterwards, though. Thank you for that. In fact, I will throw this into my to-do pile just in case I screw something up. So thank you, Nathan, for sending that. This one's called Lunar Mystery Solved by Recovery of Lost Apollo Mission Tapes. Mark, the Lunar Mystery Solved by Recovery of Apollo Lost Emission Tapes. Have you seen it? And it's at CNN.com, uh, Apollo Moon Landing Study Index. I, no, I have not seen it, but I will take a look if I get a chance and put it in my things to do. This one's called Great Picture. And it's loading. And it's loading. 
And I imagine it's got to be really great if it's taking this long to load. You know what? I'm going to take his word for it. It's from John Jacoby. I'm just going to say, yes, it's a great picture. I will look at it later because it's taking forever to load. I don't know why it isn't loading right the second. All right, this one's called Prepper Guide and Stuff. Hi, Mark. Love your work. Been following everything you do for nearly three years now. Been a flat earther since a close friend rang one day and said, Earth is flat. We worked together for years as structural draftsmen. So doing the calculations to prove the globe dimension fault took just a few minutes. I was an easy convert, being a truther for 25 years, but never considered Flat Earth until that phone call. Thank you, Don. Mark, I know your focus is on FE, but your specialty is the dome theory. But to me, FE is only a piece of the jigsaw of life. The biggest and most easily provable piece, maybe, but still a piece. You know what? I agree. The purpose of my email to you and your audience, hi, brothers and sisters, is twofold. First, to formally and publicly scrub my name off the list of Globies. Secondly, to borrow your voice and microphone and send a message to the community. Please, FE people, do yourselves a big favor and look up Mr. Astro Theology on YouTube and or UniversalTruthSchool.com. Shout out to Santos Bonacci, although the corporate entity surname should be avoided. See straw man, etc. David Icke is the dot connector, but Santo has put in place more pieces of the jigsaw with supporting evidence than anyone else I have discovered in my 25 years of investigation. Currently living two lives, father, breadwinner, slave, and student of life, I don't yet have the time or probably the brain power to fully comprehend all fine detail of Santo's wisdom. But what an awesome bloke the role model he is. Thanks again for all your efforts, Mark. Prepper guide and C2C links would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Given name is Sean from Melbourne, Australia. Where, by the way, we are going to be, but geez, you should go out and check it out. The Flat Earth documentary Behind the Curve is going to be at the Melbourne Film Festival coming up shortly. Awesome. This one's called Germany subscriber. Let's build a drone. Hi, Mark. Thanks first for all you do. It's amazing. I hope you see these message. Oh boy. Okay. Not, not the greatest English, but let's, let's work with it. And I'm not going to go into a German accent. Do you know why all weather balloons burst like 30 kilometers up? If we could build a stronger balloon that will rise like 50 kilometers up, I think we can see a lot more of the world we live in. If it's not possible, we can build a strong drone with 80 horsepower and maybe fly higher up and see some strong technology for build these drone, Russians drone, build these drone. Russians drone flight like 10 kilometers up, but we need like 50 or more uh, strong balloon for these. You can uh, make a deposit account and all flat earthers can deposit. Maybe we can get like $100,000 and use it for some tech technique for proof and even more and open everybody's eyes. Sorry for bid English. <laughs> he spelled it B-E-D. Celebrate truth, Rob Skiba and so on. All tell in their videos to deposit these account, PayPal or bank account. We need to come forward because NASA continues selling crap, telling crap. Thank you. Please answer. And that's from Eugen, E-U-J-E-N-K-U-S-C-H. T-A-N from Germany. Uh, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We, we get new tests that are happening all the time. I, I leave most of that to, to FE Core, uh, otherwise known as Field Engineers Core. They do some great job, work, stuff, whatever. This one's called Clue 15 Idea. Oh, okay. Mark, I could not sleep again. It's now 4 a.m., so here it is. Clue 15, why would they lie? Well, I don't think I'd title it why would they lie, but I like where you're going. I know you touched on why motive in the FE clues hiding God and you get that question a lot. So do many of us that are doing activism. The motive is clear to me now. It would be great if clue 15 addresses the heliocentric history. Here's an outline to clue 15, a concise breakdown of the heliocentric models, history timeline, and the Jesuits, Freemasons, and occult so-called great men that introduced the heliocentric model. Um, uh, last part, I'm sure you can think of something. Thanks. I've got to make, get some coffee and go to work, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I will add it to my list of, of clue ideas that I get every once in a while. And if you have any clue ideas, by all means, I mean, I've actually already got clue 15 
I r ready to go. I just haven't built it yet because I've been really busy. It's called the uh, the short and the long of it. It covers the uh, circumference of, of Antarctica, but I will get that eventually. This one's called Blackpool. Mark, I'm interested in the Blackpool UK meetup. Thanks, Paul and Susie. Uh, yes, it's also another thing I do. I make meetup videos for people. So if you want to do a meetup in your town, all you have to do is send me where it's going to be, when it's going to be, and what's the best contact information, and I will whip up some stuff. I already got the templates for most of the stuff built. I'll just grab some pictures and throw in a catchy song, and you guys can do a meetup, and they all turn out really, really well. I don't know if the one in Blackpool went well, but I, I'm going to guess it did. So that's what they were asking about. And you can ask about meetups too. If you say, is there any meetups in my area? Now, before you send me an email to that degree, please go into YouTube and type in Flat Earth Meetup and then the nearest city to you or nearest state to you. And you'll get a list of things in there. This one's called Curvature. Hi, Mark. I have a question that arises from a Jaronism video, Five Lies of the Globe Earth. In this video, Jaron established that all circles are similar in ratio and the, and the section of a sphere is a circle. All circles have a curvature of 0.318. This is a 0.318 per unit so that each inch has 318, a third approximately of curvature, as does every mile have 319 of curvature. Did he mean 319? If this is indeed the case, then curvature should be obvious everywhere and be beyond question. Have I misunderstood C aspect of this or has Jaren's calculations been corrected since the video? I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't watch everybody's thing. Uh, I mean, I get recommendations a lot, but there's so much content out there. I am not absolutely clear on the definition of curvature in practical visual terms. Having read the definitions, the definitions refer to the angle of departure to a tangent, which it seems can only apply to a single point. Curvature seems to refer to the extra length of curvature line requires to join two points of the circumference as opposed to a straight line joining these same two points. Hope I have made this comprehensible. This makes the formula of eight inches per mile of curvature the first time for the for the first mile an absurdity absurdity. The first mile and every mile will have nearly a third of a mile. No, no, you are wrong. No, 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 remember. It, no, can't. No, no. I, I like where your where your head's at. I like where you're going with this. No, you you are wrong. I'm gonna stop you right there. Um, your comments or corrections should would be appreciated. Regards Keith Stanfield. So Keith, no, stick with the mainstream science formula. Not, it's not right, but it's definitely not exaggerated that much. Moving on. This one's called Flat Earth Theory. Dear Mark, I have to confess that this is a totally new idea and I've kind of confused and overwhelmed it, overwhelmed by it in a good way. All I heard and watched in your videos makes very good sense, but there is one thing that I couldn't figure out. The climate differences between continents. Really? Why not? Uh, they normally explain it through globe theory, but I couldn't figure out how it works with the FE. It's because sun and the moon super small and all the thermal properties are localized. How's that? I'm pretty sure that there is a good one that will be coming from you. Yeah, the, all the thermal... Remember uh, that in a pressurized system, the, the heat uh, and all the, the thermal properties wouldn't be uh, up in the air. It wouldn't be at altitude. It would also, I mean, yeah, you would have the sun and the jet stream, which would also have the underwater conveyor system. That's the water and then the, the, all the heat properties from the ground. So no, a lot of different things that are mixing and blending here. Will you be kind enough to send me some references or links that I can read? Thanks a lot in advance. Take care and have a nice day. Or as we say in my country, Yavala? I, and that's from Z-E-K-I-Y-E-D-O-G-A-N. Z-E-K-I-Y-E-D-O-G-A-N. -E dogan I don't know. You, you know, by the way, if you're going to do that to me, tell me what country it's from. Please. Sorry. Didn't mean to raise my voice for a second there. This one's called Travel. Mark, big trucks down for the week, so I decided to put my truck to work. Wife wanted to go to a hot house in Billy Clinton's town, so I made money to pay for the trip on the trip. I'll have to get a load your way next time. I like to get paid on vacation and, of course, promote a little FE. And he's using a he's using his pickup truck to load stuff. What's he loading? These are great pictures with the wife. 
in the background looking impatient and he he wrote in wax or, or easy to pull off paint uh research flat earth youtube flat earth it's flat oh those are some cute shots he went to hot springs national national park in arkansas those are great shots that's from david schmidt thank you david that's awesome good stuff this one's called greg braden okay Hi, Mark. Came across this guy who also enlightened me to the fact that the Michelson-Morley experiment was replicated by the U.S. Air Force in 1986, and it turned out the outcome was exactly the same as 100 years before. There's a link to that. This means that the ether exists and the Earth does not move. The web of energy that connects all and everything and was also used by Tesla, and through this field, miracles can be, for be performed if we use it together for our benefit. Free energy and even curing each other's diseases, even cancer can be cured in minutes. I think one of the main reasons to lie about the shape of the earth and our central place in this web of interconnectivity lies in the fact that the powers that be have to scientifically deny the ether field, Einstein puppet of the elite, they know it exists and every now and then give us some well-closed crumbs of the pie to keep us happy and appraise the scientific achievements like radio, television, and Wi-Fi. If we learn how to use this field, we can get rid of wars, big pharma, etc. The ancient cultures already knew how to use it. Flat Earth is just the beginning. We have to move on and understand the personal implications of our awakening. Keep up the good work. I've been with you some years now. Greetings from Thailand, Eddie Lapp. Please let me know if and when you're going to read my email in your Q&A. And, yep, I'm going to put this in the thing. If you ask, I will send you an email and say, yeah, in this case, it's going to be on Q&A 82. And I will send you the email just before I put it up. This one's called Your Info and Opinion on This Planet X Thing. Mark, it's Tom from Shelton. Sure would appreciate your info and opinion on this. I've tried to find out what you've said on your past videos, but I have not found it. I find that it is... It is a real incoming thing because of cameras being shut off, red light produced reaction, and obvious planes putting out the streams of artificial clouding to obviously effort to hide it at certain times in a day almost worldwide. Please tell me your knowledge on this. Thank you, Tom Crouch. And yeah, uh, I used to be a Planet X guy, Tom, and now I am not for obvious reasons. If it is a flat, enclosed, pressurized system then every space story you've ever heard about an asteroid that's shaped like a skull or shaped like Santa Claus or all the other stuff, there's nothing out there. Or if whatever is out there, it has nothing to do with the solar system. So the Nibiru things, remember, in Planet X, that was 2012. And some people say it was 2011. Some people say it was 2013. Look, it's 2018. It's not here. And even if it showed up now, let's say Nibiru raised its ugly head right now in 2018. Uh, try to find me a conspiracy guy that can explain what happened for the last five years. Five years, that's a long time in, in, in our world. A lot can happen in five years. So where has it been? Now, if it's a pressurized system, it's not there. It would be an illusion. So if something does show up in the sky, it'd be like, uh-huh, yeah, don't buy it, whatever it is. I don't care what sort of pyrotechnics you see, what sort of sound you hear. It is not Nibiru. Even though the, when you do look up in the solar system, especially with night vision binoculars, everything appears to be binary, which is interesting in itself, you know, that all, all the stars up there are binary. But that doesn't mean, I mean, it's a good story. I like it. I, trust me, I love the Nibiru backstory. I thought it was very, very interesting. I was a huge believer in it. But not anymore because it's 2018 and I believe in Flat Earth. So if you believe in Flat Earth, you don't have to worry. You can sleep soundly knowing that whatever weird stuff happens in the sky, it's probably going to be artificial. Whether it's us or the builders themselves. This one's called How to Believe. Mark, I have watched all of your content for the past two years. I am still not convinced the Earth is flat or space isn't real. Really? You've watched my stuff for two years and you're still not convinced? What piece of smoking gun evidence would you point at as your turning point piece of truth? Uh, how about all? If you've watched it for two years, I would think the weight of the sheer amount of content would have done it for you by now. Maybe a top five evidences of a flat Earth video. I already done the five questions and I've been handing them out for months. So if you want the, the questions, I'll, I'll send it. You know what? I might send it to this guy. The clues are a good introduction to the topic, but are not convincing the masses to keep mental, to make the mental leap to flat earth. Help me and the skeptic community make it easier not to dismiss this. Thanks, Brandon. So what he's basically saying is Brandon is a skeptic 
and he's fishing, which is fine. I will send him the five questions that I sent the Georgetown guy and watch him squirm. This one's called Greetings. Mark, longtime follower, love your work. Brian Mullen touched on this a while back, but I found an animation that shows it better. Start at 11 minutes, 30 seconds. If a plane leaves the equator wanting to go due north, it would have to point at a 45 degree northwest angle at the same speed as the Earth turns east, say 1,000 miles an hour. But an average plane would be more like 500 miles an hour, so it would have to point west-northwest. hope this makes sense. Keep it flat, run. And I will open up the video just to show people. It's called, it was made in 2014. It's called Physics, Law of Motion, Newton, and Beyond. It's 11 minutes. So that's cool. Moving on. This one's called, Mark, how is this possible? Bahamas Space Treasure Map, Astronaut G. Cooper. Hi, Mark. I've been a listener to just about all your Flat Earth videos, and I've shared them with many skeptics i recently watched the discovery channel series cooper's treasure this intrigued me as i now lean towards not believing in the nasa program however the premise of the show goes on to say that the space treasure map was put together using thousands of photos taken in the 1960s by astronaut gordon cooper from the capsule to identify more than 100 anomalies in the caribbean <clears throat> that may be shipwrecks cooper who died from parkinson's disease in 2004 created a large map his Mercury 9 Faith 7 flight. At the time, he was said to have been on a mission to identify Cold War nuclear threats. Before his death, Cooper gave the maps to a friend, Daryl Miklos, a historical shipwreck discovery specialist. Miklos had been using the maps to seek out a slew of historic wrecks. Here's a link to the story. It was on Fox News. Uh, my question for your show is, why would Cooper bother spending time and resources to actually go to the Bahamas to search for treasure uh, using the photos he allegedly took from the Mercury flight if he didn't actually fly to space. It was, well, one, because you wouldn't need the Mercury program to do it. As a matter of fact, the U-2 program would be easily better to do it because it would get high enough. U-2 can get up upwards of, I think, of 100,000 feet. And from there, you could take some wonderful shots. Remember, the U-2 was designed for surveillance. It wasn't a weapons. Uh, neither was the SR-71. Aurora, we don't have any idea. But they're mostly spy planes because they move so freaking fast and you want to keep them as aerodynamic as possible. So did Cooper use one of the U-2 planes to, to, to see all this stuff? Maybe. And then just said it was Mercury? Because if he was taking pictures from Mercury, through what porthole was he taking pictures? Come on. Come on. You, you get better resolution and uh, way better angles. Because uh, the U-2 was designed for cameras. Not Anyway, uh, is it possible the space programs could still exist despite the Earth being flat? No. It's stories like this that confuse the mind. I'd love to see a video on this subject. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts, Eric. Yep, oh, those are my thoughts, Eric. This one's called Science of New Earths from Kepler. Hi, Mark. I sent a query before that you had addressed on one of your YouTube videos. I was happy to hear you discuss the Canadian side of space exploration and the connections with all space agencies. I have another question in which I hope if you haven't already if you haven't already are able to provide substantial information and counterpoints. I know sometimes your responses to emails are quick and to the point, especially if you have answered topics many times over, but I can't but it can make it seem like the information you provided is more conjecture and suggestion rather than based on substance. Don't get me wrong. You do a great job and are taking a lot of work. Uh, and it could be that I missed a video of yours that was made to go into detail on such topics. In that case, please direct me to that information. Uh, you've taken a while to get to your question, man. Anyways, here's my query. I have heard in passing on the science of finding new earths via new telescope technology and steadily watching over a number of years the dips in light output from the star they are watching indicating that a planet body is passing in front of it from this they say they can determine various facts about the planets and where it's located in relation to the star uh, in your opinion, what information and testing are they using in order to determine characteristics of the supposed planets that are in orbit around the star and what do you think they are viewing when they record dips in light output in instead of a planet body passing in front of the light source wow you are detailed in this thanks for your time i look forward to hearing your input andrew and that's from andrew Car uh, candy um no 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 your your, your premise is all wrong which is gotta remember 
it, first off, anytime anyone releases that story, it is just global reinforcement. But are they looking at something? Sure. Scientists look at stuff all the time. Uh, radio telescope op op operators and normal observatory telescope operators, they're looking at stuff, but they're looking at a screen. They're looking at a really, really, really high resolution whatever display system we want to call it. If you want to call it holographic, do you want to call it uh, high resolution? I mean, what are we using now? OLED and 8K? Imagine something that's a million K. What can you look at? They're just looking at dots and they're trying to make interpretations based on an heliocentric model that has been in place for a long time. Remember, it was Tesla that said that scientists tend to just build on each other's equations to where, without looking at the base equation that started it to where they get up to a certain height he goes, everything's meaningless up there because no one bothered to look at the foundation to see if it would all crumble. And that's what you're talking about. You're saying, oh, okay, yeah, they, they're finding new Earths. Based on what? Based on mathematical calculations that are based on other calculations that are based on a foundation that is absolutely wrong. So, no. No, there's only that, that's my simple answer to this. And that is they're not looking at anything. They're looking at other people's equations. That's all they're doing. Remember, we, we've gotten to the point now where we've got generations of math that if, if the initial f mathematical formula is wrong, then everything based on it is wrong. No different than when I was talking about the, the spacesuit, which is why I've been focusing on it as of late, which is if the spacesuit doesn't work, if the spacesuit is a lie, then everything built on that lie is also a lie. In fact, it's even a worse lie. See what I mean? Kind of. So anyway, thank you, though, for the question. This one's called Documents and Such. Uh, hi, Mark. Could you send me the survival guide PDF and the throw? I'm only doing this because you actually, the title of the video is, or title of the email is called Documents and Such. Uh, and the Throne of God unification paper, along with the detailed five science questions you propose, the professor turns you down. Also, the model and manufacturer of the night vision set you have linked to it. Wow. He actually asked for everything. The survival guide the the harmony paper the five questions and uh a link to the did i write him back yes i did uh and he wanted the, who have the night vision binoculars that i use uh, i use just so you guys know so you don't have to at, call and ask me i use night owl night vision they're made in belarus and you can get them on amazon for i think about 450 400, and you can only get them gen it's gen 1 binoculars i mean don't spend the difference between gen 1 and gen 2 are about four times the price gen 1 will run you uh, less than 500 bucks gen 2 will run you about 2000 bucks but you can get it in a 10x and honestly i i you know if i ever get around to it my eyes don't fail uh, I was thinking of actually picking up a Gen 2 and seeing if it looks any different, what, what's up there. But Gen 1 will be just fine. Just make sure you get in 5X the max. And, and I use Night Owl binoculars. Don't use monoculars. Use, use binoculars. You get way better depth. This one's called Curious About Producer. Mark, you can read this on air or not. doesn't matter to me. Hey, Mark, this is Dottie. I was listening to your latest Strange World. You mentioned that you need an on-air producer. <laughs> Not yet, I don't, but I'm getting close. Uh, can you tell me a little more about what you're looking for? I'm super tech savvy, but I can learn and would really love to be involved in the community more as an avid listener of yours. Ah, that's nice. Hope you hope to hear back from you soon. Much love, my friend. Keep it flat, dotty. And yeah, yeah. If I ever if I ever get big enough, I, I may end up having to dole out some of the producer responsibilities to other people. Uh, haven't haven't quite gotten there yet though. This one's called. Uh, nope, that one's not called anything. I was just responding. This one's called, uh, you know, I'll read this one. I, I won't say who it's from. This one's called Face of the Sun. Brother Mark, greetings. As there is a face of the moon that is always the same, I wonder if we can prove there is a face of the sun that is always the same. Hmm. If there is a face of the sun that always looks the same, that would empirically disprove NASA's NASA doesn't deserve capital letters. Yeah, I absolutely agree, by the way. When I type in NASA, I always try to type it lowercase. I don't want to give them any more credit. It's interesting, though, because it'll show up in spell checker if you don't make it all uppercase. Uh, Earth orbiting around the sun's theory, it would prove true our non-spinning ball biblical description. If we always see the same face of the sun, there is no way we can be orbiting around it while chasing after it through space as that would result in seeing the sun from multiple angles. Liars lie about their lies to convince others. This is the way it is. 
they have their lies which explain why we always see the same moon face. If we can prove we always see the same sun face, their lies will be exposed even more so. I hope this helps. Outstanding choice with the white lab coats for you and Patricia on FEOHP243. Also keep an eye on this bearer of false witness named Robert Sungenis. He says things that are disturbing to me, like how he doesn't condemn NASA's use of harnesses, composited images, pools, blue screens, and augmented reality. This foolish man is supposed to be a doctor. Scary stuff, my friend. I do hope you get the chance to grid your loins and debate him. He needs to feel what it's like to debate a manly, experienced man who the creator is blessed with understanding. He is in need of a good humbling by you. Thank you, my friend, for everything you do. Stay good, humble, and manly when dealing with these bearers of false truths who pollute the minds of the weak with their blasphemous false teachings. You are loved. I won't say who that's from. It's a good guy, though, out of California. Got a chance to meet him. Down at the Arcadia meetup. This one's called Just Spamming One of My F.E. Experiments. Hi, Mark. Great show. Sorry for my bad English, but I'm clutch on the same F.E. page. Oh, wow. Pfft. Dutch, not clutch. Uh, I did some test with my iPhone X and a level in a car. Every 111 kilometers, according to the globe model, the gyro should be off level by one degree. 40,000 kilometers divided by 360 degrees. And I derived 300 plus kilometers and did not measure any off level. Maybe one of your listeners could do the same when they go greater distances to kill the globe once and for all. Yeah, yeah. Driving with a with a spirit level. Sure. It works just the same as a plane. I wonder how globe tards will respond. Even the fact that rockets, jets can never fly in total vacuum because it has to have something to push off from. Pressure jets push off and the globe tards and the nasa fanboys will never admit how much mind control from governments and agencies can we undo to make a bunch of critical thinkers and self-sovereign people the world would be a better place if all people reject politics and should agree to live by a simple rule concept that even redefine the freedom of choice that we were to contribute for best regards martin p.s i let some good f e stuff circumnavigate through online games seeding the seed showing how the lie lives that's from Martin. Thank you. Super from Dutch. From from the Netherlands. This one's called Mark. <laughs> Mark, I think you're a very entertaining and intelligent man, and I do want to ask you something. Can I can buy into everything you say about the flat earth, but is there any way an individual like yourself could go to Antarctica and either go left or right and simply just follow the wall of ice for a few miles? No, you cannot. The Antarctic Treaty is way too comprehensive. Look it up when you get a chance. There's some fantastic videos made from people that, that went into all the subtle nuances of the, the Antarctic Treaty, and it is brutal. I'm not going to pretend I am some intellect with an amazing IQ. I'm just a simple man who believes the Bible is the word of God and Jesus is the authority on all matters. I, like the rest of the people who write you, simply would love the truth. Maybe I'm missing... The point of all the test of flat earth, the one and only answer is to follow the wall. I don't expect you to write me back. I come to you with all sincerity and again, simply want the truth. Feel free to make fun of my question. I have two other dentist friends that I discuss this with daily for the last two weeks. We all want to know. Thanks so much, Matt. You're very welcome, Matt. This one's called Curious About Producer. Yep, yep, yep. And this one's called Dome Top Pick. And, okay. Sorry, it took a while to build. Uh, Dome Top Pick. Hi, Mark. Just wanted to send you an interesting clue that I stumbled onto. Since I have only recently started looking into this stuff, I realize that you may have already thought of and seen this, and I have not looked extensively into all of your material, but I did watch your Director's Cut video and several other videos from other sources, but I didn't think... I don't think... I seen anyone mention on show or show this yet probably they have so i loaded up my computer tonight to watch one of your videos and my windows 10 login screen shows random wallpapers and i seen an image of the milky way showing what appears to possibly be the curve of the top of the dome firmament i then clicked on the search icon for the wallpaper and found many interesting images but i sent you a few of the best i seen that's from carrie and I will take a look at those. Thank you. This one's called 
Flat Earth government documents. Uh, Mr. Sargent, there's a strong probability that you are already familiar with the government documents I've listed in the attached memes. However, I felt the content was much too important to assume anything. You will notice that each study clearly lists the basis of all mathematics used as it relates to a flat non-rotating earth. The argument against these documents is that the government only used flat earth calculations to simplify the theoretical calculations for the purposes of study. However, at least one of these studies involves military rocket science and target programming. I say that theoretical and simplified math has no use in a military situation. The military must be precise or they indeed miss the target. I have personally verified these documents and have made these memes from original downloads. You can easily verify these studies simply by typing in title and study number into any search engine. I hope you don't mind me sending you these memes sometimes. I want to help the cause in any way I can, and you are the one who has the platform to get this info out to the world. Have a great day. Sincerely, Dom. Thank you, Dom. This one's called Kakata 3301. All right. Hey, Mark, I just learned a truth, the truth, a month ago. I've looked into conspiracies my whole life, but Flat Earth is the one that brought it all together. I was actually at the Lawrence meet up mainly to pass along some information about a secret organization that releases a puzzle on 4chan once a year since 2012 for recruitment i thought you could take a look seeing that you have a history in programming this is the link suggesting they are involved with with wikileaks the 2017 puzzle has a flat earth all over it i believe it is more or less a calling i have not seen it uh, either way uh this has been the longest month of my entire life but i am grateful for people like you who work to bring light to all of this the war on truth, I believe, is on the cyber frontier. This one, we got time for a few more. This one's called Michael Tellinger, Why I Don't Talk About Flat Earth. That was sent by Francis, and the video is called, uh, literally called Michael Tellinger, Why I Don't Talk About Flat Earth. And it was published uh, July 14th. And uh, it's from a plain truth .info. Uh, He's got 142,000 subscribers. He's got 30, 36,000 views. Awesome. I will check it out. This one's called Space Museum in Downey, California. Uh, okay. Mark, I was listening to your show, Strange World 156, published July 10th. A caller was talking about the Von Braun Memorial she came across in Alabama. It reminded me about my own experience with the Space Museum in Downey, California. They used to have a Boeing facility there, and then it was decommissioned and turned into a film studio known as Downey Studios. It was known for having the largest indoor pool water tank in North America. Right before they demolished the entire site for gentr gentrification, they painted a giant moon on the side of the building. Now the Space Museum is left there with a model capsule and some other stuff. One of the streets nearby became Apollo Way. I always thought it was weird that it was a space re it was space related when Downey is a rather unknown suburb but once I found out the film studio had the largest water tank in North America it was then I realized the significance of it to NASA it's hilarious that they put everything out there and all you have to do is see most people look but they don't see check out the photo and that's from the studiotour.com and it's Downey Studios hmm have a wonderful flat day don't fall off the edge Anthony Awesome, Anthony. All right, now we're going to start looking for the one to end on. Let's see. This one's called 42. No one calls from the UK. Mark, last Q&A email show, the number 42 was mentioned, and I, could help, I couldn't help but think about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I would love to call in. Can I use Skype? Rob from the UK. And yeah, if you want, if you want um, I know we can do it. I mean, I prefer that you call in using the phone number, but if you have a Skype address... You can, you can buzz into the show, sure. All you have to do is uh, attach to me in Skype. My Skype address is no big secret. It is Mark-Sergeant, and uh, the parentheses next to it, but the city would probably show up as Langley, which is Langley, Washington. It is not Langley, Virginia. I'm up here in Seattle, and there's a little town not very far from here, and the zip code that I use is 98260, which is Langley, Washington. So, yeah, you, can, you could call in with uh, Skype if you're from uh, the UK. Sure. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, 
Please explain the sun. Where does it go? Why can I always see the sun no matter the weather except for when it sets? If it's a flat earth, wouldn't I, wouldn't I always be able to see the sun? And that's from Ricky. No, you wouldn't because the sun's really, really small. You're absolutely right, though. I mean, that is classic conditioning, which is uh, if the sun is really, really big and it's still really, really big. Yeah, sure. You'd be able to see it everywhere. But the sun isn't really, really big. It's tiny by comparison. It's no think of it as a 50 mile wide airplane. When you when an airplane goes off into the distance, do you see it after a while? No, because it goes off into the distance. It shrinks down to a very, very small pixel. Combine that with atmospheric distortion and instant setting. If you think I'm kidding, look up some wonderful flat earth sunset videos where the sun looks like it sets. And then when you zoom in now with digital zoom, you can pull it back up. The sun appears to rise. Go explain that to me. Uh, this one's called Mark with what's with the Piri Reese Antarctica map. Watch new ancient artifacts documentary 2018 baffling relics that should not exist on YouTube. Hi, Mark. Another interesting challenge I found about Antarctica. Maybe a good show to touch upon. And uh, yeah, it's the Piri Reese P I R I R E I S map. Hope you can talk about this on your show. All the best, Eric. Yeah, I'm not going to discuss it here. Not at the end of the show. But but please, by all means, anyone else wants to look it up, the P-I-R-I -I space R-E-I-S Antarctica map is pretty good. Let's see if there's anything else I can do here. Uh, this one's called the Warming Antarctica Could Be Primed for Invasive Species. That's from Earther.com. I would not read that. Any any Anything from the Earther.com website, that's from Nordy. Thanks, Nordy. Come on, i got to find something to end on here. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's end on this one. This one's called Encircling Ice Wall. Mark, I very much enjoyed your videos on Flat Earth. I believe there's more evidence for a flat Earth than a globe. However, two questions remain unanswered. That's fine. Everyone's got their own questions. That's why I say ask questions. Remain unanswered for me, and I hope you can shed some light on them. One, does the military control access to the entire ring of ice or just portions of it? All of it. The Antarctic Treaty would be supported by multinational Navy, multinational military force. You, the United States would not want to bear the weight of this financially. It would just be awful. I wouldn't want to do it. And plus, every every country would have a stake in this to, to some degree. Now, of course, you wouldn't tell the military what exactly they're guarding. You just say, oh, yeah, keep, by the, keep ships and things away from the Antarctic coastline. They wouldn't know why. They're meant to follow orders. Uh, two, if one were to fly in any compass direction from any starting point, the wall of ice would be encountered. Yes, it would. If so, could not the flat earth be proven by making multiple flights in multiple directions, possibly from the same starting point, chronicling the distance traveled until the ice wall was reached? No, you're never getting to the ice wall. Because remember, to even to get to it, you're going to have to bypass. Like, the Antarctic Treaty is in place for a reason. You're not going to get that far. Plus, you'd also have to give up GPS. The GPS system was designed by the United States military in the mid-90s. The GPS system is also going to try to steer you away from it. Uh, let's see. Or sail in one direction until reaching the ice wall. Again, Antarctic Treaty. Then turn to either port or start. Yeah, I, absolutely. It's, it's what I would have thought of, uh, and I did, and lots of people have mentioned this. The Antarctic Treaty. It is no joke. That's why we should end the show on. Look it up if you get a chance. Antarctic Treaty, Flat Earth. Type it in. Listen to the videos. In fact, I re reproduced one on my channel, and Rob Skiba did the same. Uh, there's some great, great videos on that. Um, thanks for pondering these questions. I appreciate any feedback you might provide, and that's from Richard. And we're going to end on that one, because I still got stuff to do and getting ready for a big Flat Earth week. Thank you for everyone that left, um, that sent me emails so far and people that will send stuff in the future. You can remember, email them to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.